My name is Leila Logiziko. I'm the chair of the committee. Uh, tonight, uh, we have one application for uh, our review. Um, this is an application at 175 uh, Fifth Avenue. And in case uh, you guys don't know what this address refers to, this is the Flatiron Building. Um, so uh, we just a few words about how the meeting is going to proceed um, in case you have not uh, joined us before. Uh, the applicant is going to be uh, given the opportunity to give us a full yet thorough uh, and, uh, and concise uh, presentation. Um, we have a lot to cover, so um, please uh, you know, bear with, uh, with the applicant and with us. Uh, once this uh, presentation concludes, uh, I will turn to uh, questions by members of the committee. Members of the committee will have an opportunity to ask questions to the applicant of the application. Once this question session uh, concludes, I will open up the floor to members of the public. Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and make comments about the application. Uh, the applicant will have an opportunity to address those questions and comments and then we will move to business session during business session we move the discussion to the members of the committee at that point members of uh, the public and the applicant are no longer allowed to speak and members of the committee will uh, discuss the matter make comments and then make a motion whether to approve to deny to approve with conditions or to deny unless some conditions are met um, a motion will be made, this motion will be voted on, and a vote will be taken. This vote will, be, will become the position of the committee. The position of the committee will be presented at the full board of Committee Board 5 on Thursday, November the 8th. You correct me if I'm wrong, but I October. think... Hmm? October. October. October, yes, yeah. sorry, sorry about that. Uh, October 8th, uh, 6 p.m. is the start of the meeting. The full board will vote on the position that was adopted by the committee. The vote of the full board becomes the position of the committee board. This position is then uh, forwarded to LPC as our official recommendation. So um, with all of that being said, uh, we're going to turn to the applicant who is gonna have an opportunity to give us a uh, uninterrupted uh, presentation. I know that we have a lot to cover. Yes. Um, and although we only have one item on the agenda, I would uh, suggest that you're as concise as uh, possible. Um, we are very familiar with this building, as you may imagine, although we may uh, have some blind spots and uh, you know we certainly don't want to miss anything. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Richard, uh, go ahead, tell okay, us. Okay, so I'm Richard Metzke from Bayer Blunderbell. I'm here with my associate Gaspari Malik. So let me just share my screen. I'll pop the presentation up. Okay, can everybody see it? Yes. Good. We're good? Okay. So uh, the, the flat iron building was built by uh, the George Fuller Company in 1902. And it will celebrate its 118th birthday on October 1st in two days. So um, I think as we all know for all those years, it's uh, obviously remained one of the most recognizable, I think buildings in the world and an, an iconic and enduring symbol, certainly of our city. There are four things that we want to present tonight. Uh, one is the lobby entry on both Fifth and Broadway. Two is a storefront master plan. Three is alterations to the 21st floor. And four is new mechanical equipment on the roof. Not part of our scope, but if you've been to the building recently and have passed by, you'll also notice that there's quite a bit of work going on. The first thing is that the 612 AC units have been removed. The building's also undergoing local law 11 facade repair, including the cleaning and restoration of the terracotta uh, and limestone. And all that work will be completed in June of 2021. What you don't see is a full gut renovation inside the building with a new HVAC system uh, uh, being installed, new emergency egress stairs, 
upgraded elevators, new bathrooms. And uh, we are also working on the redesign of the building lobby. So with that, we'll start the presentation. Um, the Flatiron Building actually was designated in 1966 by, by LPC. And obviously it's within the Ladies Mile Historic District. Uh, um, the, uh, the George Fuller Company, um, whose CEO was Harry Block at the time, hired Daniel Burnham as the architect, Burnham and Company. Uh, Burnham um, uh, employed um, an architect, Frederick Dinkelberg, who became the chief architect and designer for the Flatiron Building. And I'm just showing basically seven examples of Dinkelberg's work that he did just prior and just after the, uh, the after the design of the Flatiron Building. So besides the unique shape the Flatiron Building has, you can see a lot of similarities in a lot of the work that Dinkelberg did at about the same time. It was almost a kit of parts that he used on, on many of these buildings. Uh, uh, the building uh, construction started in, in uh, 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 1901. Uh, just a photo from 1885 on the upper left showing the site itself, and that's from the corner of Broadway and 23rd. Um, on the upper right are two uh, renderings, and that, took, that was from Architectural Records October 1902 issue. The building opened October 1st, uh, 1902, so it was about the same time as the opening. And in the bottom are just some photographs during construction. It took about a year to construct the building. Um, uh, it started in the fall of 1901 and actually, it, uh, and, and then obviously opened uh, the fall of uh, 1902. Um, in 1905, the 21st floor was added. Um, it was more of, at that time, it was more built as a utilitarian shed. Um, and it, it was called the drafting room. And uh, part of it was probably used by the George Fuller Company for drafting, but most of it was used as artist studios. Um, uh, later in its use, a lot of those artists worked for some of the publishers uh, that were in the building. Uh, the first major change actually occurred in 1952. The original lobby was uh, 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 removed and a new modern streamlined uh, lobby uh, was built in its place. The vaulted ceiling that was originally there was removed. Um, and you can see from the photograph, you're looking towards Broadway. Uh, the elevators are to, towards your right, uh, that it was all basically white Carrera uh, marble. And you can see the change, significant change in the, uh, in the storefront uh, entry, uh, sorry, in the lobby entry on, on, the, on the left. Uh, in 1966, as we had mentioned, the building uh, uh, was designated a New York City landmark. Uh, ne uh, ne the next significant change actually occurred in 1985 with the, again, another renovation of the lobby. Uh, at this point, they returned uh, to the vaulted ceiling. Um, the store the entry remained uh, somewhat similar. The lower portion of the entry, the revolving doors, and the two side doors remained from the 1985 renovation. renovation. Uh, but you can see how um, by removing the flat ceiling, it once again opened up the, uh, uh, the vault and, and actually created quite a bit of transparency through the, uh, through the lobby itself. So the first part of the um, uh, uh, presentation is basically uh, on the lobby entry, the portal entries from both Fifth Avenue and from uh, um, uh, Broadway. They're symmetrical right now. And as I mentioned before, if you look below the doors and the revolving door, the revolving door is half in and half out of the lobby. Uh, the doors remained uh, uh, from the 85 renovation. And because they put back the bolted ceiling, there was uh, 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 much more glass in place. I think one of the things that I'll show you is the lobby itself is actually very, very small and very constrained. And so when you look at the original lobby entry, 
Uh, there's a photograph on the left from 1911 and a drawing from uh, uh, the construction document from 1901. There were four doors originally, uh, two double doors and a double door in the center, two side doors. Those doors were actually quite small. Uh, they were about two feet, eight inches wide to two feet, four inches wide for the side doors. Um, but I think the uh, predominant uh, uh, principal element of, of the entry itself was actually the, uh, the fairly large transom that went across at the point where the vault uh, uh, or the arched window started. Um, and I think that became a major element in terms of the composition of this entry. And it plays an important role in, in what um, uh, we want to do with the entry. And just as a comparison, you can see over on the left, the original entry from 1911. Uh, the center photograph is from uh, the fifth, uh, the, the renovation in the 50s. Um, and you can see then the second renovation in, in 86. And you can see also that the doors uh, 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 down below in the 86 renovation were actually the same ones that were in the uh, uh, 53 renovation. The face sheet was a little bit thicker. And you can see that there was a much more glass placed in the lobby because of the return to the vaulted ceiling. And one thing I could say actually about the entry itself is given the, uh, the narrowness and, and, and the, uh, uh, how small the lobby is and how constrained it is, actually those windows uh, give it a lot of transparency, a lot of openness and a lot of light, uh, which I think is important uh, 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 given the size and the scale of the existing lobby. Uh, this is a plan on the, uh, of the lobby itself. On the left, uh, the existing uh, plan of the lobby. And I just pointed out because of the work we're doing uh, for the entry portals. The existing lobby has um, symmetrical entries, both on Fifth Avenue and Broadway. There's a revolving door. That revolving door is half in and half out of the building. There's two side doors. Each of those side doors are about two feet, four inches wide. This building is not ADA uh, compliant. Uh, those doors aren't ADA compliant. Uh, ADA entry is actually through the loading dock uh, on Broadway. It's to the right side of the entry. That storefront was modified at some point. There's a double set of doors there, uh, and that leads directly into the backside of an elevator. Uh, the drawing to the right is our plans for the renovation of the lobby. Uh, we're actually going to add a little bit additional space to it for a concierge desk, and that's to the uh, sort of left side of the lobby itself. But the big change is on Fifth Avenue, we're gonna go back and add once again, the vestibule that existed originally. There'll be a double set of doors. Those doors will be ADA compliant. And those doors will also be big enough because one of the egresses from the building itself will go out through the lobby and out to Fifth Avenue. On Broadway, we'll have a revolving door. There won't be any side doors. There'll be two side lights but we move, the, we move the revolving door drum into the building itself so it doesn't sit half in and half out. This is a, a rendering of the, of the entry off of Fifth Avenue. As I mentioned before, I think the big, is the big principal element in terms of our design uh, is to bring back the original transom that was above the uh, original entry. And I think that was probably the, the, uh, the one element that um, was most important in terms of that design because it picked up the top of the storefronts uh, that surround the entire building. So the top of that transom uh, within a few inches aligns with the top of all the storefronts and the bay windows of those storefronts and carries that line strongly around uh, the building itself. So I think that was uh, important to us. I think also um, uh, we want to maintain this sort of transparency, uh, the lightness of the, of, of the entry itself, uh, the ability to bring light into this space, given how small it is. Uh, we will be um, uh, closely actually replicating the original vaulted ceiling that was in the original design. Uh, uh, there was a sense there were these series of coffers in the vaulted ceiling. We're going to bring them back with, and we're going to light them up. So we want to also make sure at night that this lobby also appears a little bit, uh, is also lit uh, uh, um, uh, up, uh, that it's not dark, 
Uh, and that you can also view that ceiling as it runs from uh, Fifth Avenue all the way to Broadway. On the left is the elevation of the, of the doors. You can see the transom. The transom would be in the same location as it originally was in and the same profile. We also have the same profile for the framing of the, of the doors uh, uh, and the window up above. Uh, we're gonna use basically the same profile. Uh, the doors would now go up to the, tra the transom itself. They'll be about 10 feet tall. Originally, they were only about seven feet, six inches. They were quite squat. Uh, and then have two side lights on both sides of the, uh, the door itself. On the right is a view inside the lobby itself, looking back out to Fifth Avenue. Not only did I mention that we're gonna uh, closely replicate that vaulted ceiling that was there originally, but we are also gonna pick up on the interior architecture of the original lobby itself. Um, we're gonna pick up on the idea of uh, 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 of the materiality that was there, the marbles, uh, the marble floor and the marble walls, uh, um, uh, the framing of the floor itself, uh, uh, the panelization of the lobby that they originally had. Uh, and those panels were framed in bronze and we're gonna be able to do that again. Uh, but the most important element of the lobby was that cornice that went all the way around uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the transom and picked up the transom um, uh, in the vestibule and then back out towards the outside of the, of the building. So I think the most important element in terms of uh, what we're doing inside, which I know is not landmark, but, but actually is important in terms of what we did outside uh, in terms of its portal was to pick up these important elements in terms of uh, uh, where that vault started, uh, the cornice feature, uh, the scale of the original uh, lobby, uh, and the, uh, the panelization of it. Also the materiality, we are going to go with bronze on the entrance. Yeah, so we'll pick up not only on some of the profiles, but also uh, have, a, have an entry that has some robustness to it and, 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 and have the same materiality that was there originally. So just as a comparison, uh, the drawing on the left was the original, as I mentioned, the doors were only about seven feet, eight inches tall, but those doors in terms of its width were only two feet eight, the double door, and the side doors were about two feet six. So they were non, uh, obviously today wouldn't be uh, ADA compliant. Uh, on the renovation from the 50s, the, uh, there was the uh, center revolving door and the two side doors, those side doors were only two feet, four inches in dimension. And then um, our, uh, our new design, uh, with 10 foot doors or doors that I think are much more in keeping with the scale of the building itself, the simplicity of it, uh, uh, the visibility and transparency that we want, but the doors are wide enough uh, for, for egress from the building and also ADA compliance. Uh, this is a view uh, rendering from Broadway. You're looking at uh, uh, the portal, main portal entry. And again, it's basically symmetrical to what we're doing on the other side. Instead of a double set of doors, we would have the revolving door on this side and the revolving door would be set into the building with two glass side lights on both sides. On the drawing on the left is the elevation. And again, just showing the revolving door set back into the building to leave, it, to leave a nice clean face. Uh, the fascia or transom is exactly the same as on Fifth Avenue. So is the framing around the, uh, uh, the entry itself and a view again from the lobby inside, uh, looking back out to Broadway, that uh, revolving door is brought into the building. Um, and again, you can see the sort of materiality, the color of those materials, the richness of them uh, um, and, the, uh, and the use of bronze in terms of, uh, of the entries. A comparison of uh, on Broadway of the original entry to the left, the uh, 19, uh, uh, the existing entry uh, that was from 1985, and our proposal um, on the right side. Uh, this is a section on top of the existing lobby that runs from Broadway to Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue is to your right. Broadway is to your left. You can see the two revolving doors that are basically half in and half out. 
And you can see the, uh, the materiality of the lobby itself. It's got this sort of faux finish to it. And actually, if you've been in there, the floor is actually the one, the floor remained from the 1953 modernization. Uh, you can see the section that, uh, uh, of the renovation down below. And just wanted to point out on the Fifth Avenue side to the right, you can see the vestibule uh, uh, on Fifth Avenue. And on the left, you can see the, revol the revolving uh, door. But again, just pointing out, we're going back, uh, 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 closely reproducing the original vaulted ceiling that was there, that strong cornice that ran through the building itself that reappeared uh, on the transom on the doors, and then that panelization of the walls uh, with marble and then framed in bronze. This is a blow up of the Fifth Avenue entry. Uh, to the left is the proposal. You can see the um, uh, uh, vestibule. Uh, you also see those red dashed lines. That's, um, that will be a blow up uh, of the transom itself. And the top dashed red line is just, will be a blow up uh, of the profile of the framing that goes around the window. So if you go to your right, uh, the middle drawing says proposed. That's our transom that we are proposing. Uh, uh, and if you look directly to the right of it, it says original. So we are going to replicate uh, as close as we can the dimensions of the original transom, the depth of the original transom, and the height of the original transom. So it's very much in keeping what was there originally. And then up above, we're going to keep that, uh, uh, we're going to keep very closely to the a profile that was originally in the building that sort of framed both the doors um, and the uh, uh, window above them. Uh, this drawing is on the uh, Broadway side. The drawing all the way to the right is a section through the uh, revolving door. Again, we'll sh I'll show you the transom on that and then the profile up above on top of the arched window. So the first middle drawing shows proposed. That's our proposal in terms of the profiling of the transom and the uh, profile of the um, uh, arched window up above. And once again, it's the same profile that we'd have on Fifth Avenue. And that profile is very much in keeping with the original profile. And you can see that all the way to the left. So the dimensions and the profiling are very similar to what was there originally. So the next portion or, or, or part two, the second element of our proposal is a, a retail storefront master plan. So let me start that. Uh, the drawings up above, on top uh, show the renderings that were in architectural record back in October of 1902. And what's interesting is, and I'll show you later on in the presentation, the storefronts were all designed to be flat. Um, and you can see it in the renderings up above, and I'll show you, you can see it in the original drawings, construction documents of the building. Um, as it was built in 1902, and you can see the photographs from 1903, 1905, down below in 1908, uh, they were, they are, uh, uh, um, bay windows. Somewhere during construction or immediately right after construction, these windows were changed out. Um, and I know there was a, uh, there was litigation from one of the retailers in the building, you know, when it did open that their glass, their storefront blew out and there was flooding into their store. What was happening was after the building went up, obviously the, uh, 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 um, uh, this became a wind tunnel uh, from the park to the building itself. And, you know, the way it went around this building was either blow, was most likely blowing out some of the windows. They were quickly converted to um, uh, uh, these bay windows, which you see today, except for 22nd Street, that remained flat glass. So just some other photos uh, from 1911 uh, up top. Um, uh, uh, and you can see all the bay, you can see the bay windows, uh, bay storefronts that were occurring both on Broadway 
um, and on Fifth Avenue. And in fact, if you look at the upper right-hand one, you can see the flat storefronts remained on 22nd Street. Um, we found a photograph that was labeled 1902. It's down below on the lower left. So that had to be right after late fall or winter, but it looks like probably late fall uh, of 02, if the dating was correct. And you could see that there were uh, of the base storefronts. Um, I also just included a storefront from, uh, or a picture from uh, 1977, uh, uh, just looking off of uh, Broadway uh, to those storefronts. This is the original plan, uh, ground floor plan uh, from Burnham's office. Uh, I labeled each of those storefronts uh, from the uh, cow catcher uh, on the corner. Uh, that actually the cow catcher the, or the corner retail was placed in there just after uh, 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 construct uh, just after the building was constructed. Um, it was actually designed in April of uh, 1902 when the building was under construction. And Harry Black, who's CEO of George Fuller, wanted to make sure that he utilized every square foot of this site. So there was 92 square feet that was left on the site itself. And, and so uh, with somewhat of Burnham's objections, they did get this thing built and in place uh, 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 fairly quickly after the building opened. Uh, but you will see, if you look at this thing, all flat um, uh, storefronts. Uh, if you also look at the elevations uh, from the original documentation from 1901, they do show up as, as flat storefronts. Uh, and I did label them down below. So these are the ones off of Fifth Avenue. These are the ones on 22nd Street. And there hasn't been much change to the ones on 22nd Street. There was a change, and we can go into it a little bit later, on the corner of 22nd and 5th. Later on, probably later in the... Uh, uh, early 1900s, that corner uh, uh, window became a uh, revolving door. Uh, a view of uh, Broadway storefronts, uh, very similar uh, to, to what was going on on Fifth Avenue. So this is a, a, a ground floor plan of how the storefronts exist today in the building. And I've labeled them starting you know, on the left, on the left side, uh, 01 went all the way around as 23 storefronts. Um, and then we'll go through in some detail about with the changes that have occurred in all these storefronts over the years. So this is a drawing that shows the Fifth Avenue existing condition, right? Uh, um, showing, you know, uh, storefront 01 was renovated back in, uh, uh, with new glass back, I think in 2006. But you can see, you know, uh, um, uh, the storefronts um, uh, on this facade and just want to note there are two storefronts, storefront 05 and storefront um, uh, 08. Those were renovated probably in the 1990s. Uh, uh, there was an app, there was an approval by LPC staff for a modification to a storefront but it didn't quite match the storefronts that were modified. Uh, but the permit uh, uh, explains exactly what happened on these storefronts. 04 and 08 were modified to, to have an, an 18 inch side light next to the door. Obviously those also made it ADA compliant in those storefronts. Those doors were reduced from 42 inches to 36 inches. The remaining doors on these store, almost all the storefronts are 42 inches. Um, so those were two changes that occurred. Uh, again, the, the uh, revolving door on the corner, 22nd and 5th was, was uh, uh, modified um, uh, back in uh, uh, what, 2001 uh, from, its, uh, from, from when it was built in, uh, I think the early 1900s. And then there were also the louvers that were placed uh, and flank both the entries on Fifth Avenue and Broadway. And you can see them, they're in storefront 05 and 06. I think those louvers went into the building during the 1985 um, renovation. Uh, this is the 22nd Street. 22nd Street is closest to the original 
uh, uh, storefronts um, uh, because they remain flat. Um, and again, just point out the one on the corner was what, what was modified. This is Broadway. Um, and again, uh, if you look at storefront 18 and storefront 23, so those were modified probably in the mid 19, uh, 1990s, right, to have that side light. Uh, also, uh, storefront 19 was, uh, the doors were modified, the doors were pulled back, a single door was made into a double door. It's greatly recessed and they have that double door because that's their ADA access into the buildings. And similar to what happened on Fifth Avenue, the transoms on both sides of the entries, uh, probably from the 85 renovation uh, uh, became uh, louvers. Uh, first part of the uh, uh, master plan is new louvers on the building. So this building's undergoing a complete HVAC renovation. Uh, uh, the building needs additional louvers for its retail space. The building also has uh, 10,000, about 10,500 square feet below grade in the cellar. The cellar was originally a restaurant. It was called the Flatiron Restaurant. It opened when the building opened. It seated 1,500 people. Actually, if you're able to go down there, you can see little remnants of that original restaurant. Not only the, some of the bathrooms still exist, and you can actually see some, uh, 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 some of the columns and, and, and some of the uh, uh, plaster work that uh, was there originally. But there are photographs that you can, you can find of this restaurant. It was rather significant and busy, and I think ultimately probably went out of uh, business in the 1920s during the Depression. Um, so there's two types of louvers that are required for the retail that's going below grade and, 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 and this retail on grade. So um, we're looking for, uh, there's two types. Type one, uh, uh, which is labeled, is basically the, the louvers that are over the storefronts themselves. It's, a five, it's, it's, it's in the transom. It's about five feet, two feet, five inches uh, in height. Those would occur in those storefronts that are on uh, Fifth Avenue and those on Broadway. On 22nd Street would be uh, uh, louver number two. That's a full height louver in the transom on 22nd Street, which would be similar to the transom, to the louvers that currently flank the entry today. So a detail of those type of louvers, they meet all of uh, LPC's rules for, for louvers themselves. Uh, the first one to the left, uh, I'm just showing one of those tip, new typical storefronts uh, from the uh, uh, mid 1990s with the uh, uh, side lights. Oh, it should be noted and we'll show it when we uh, look at storefronts themselves. What they actually did to modify those storefronts was they utilized the existing, the original material on those storefronts. Um, they didn't throw it away. They were able to utilize it. If you look carefully at it, you really can't tell the difference between what was original and what was modified later on. Uh, and when we get to the storefronts, we'll do exactly the same thing. But this does describe those louvers, louver number one and louver type one and louver type two on, on the right-hand side. Uh, the partial louvers over the storefronts of, of uh, Broadway and Fifth, and the full height um, louver in the transom that would be on uh, 22nd Street. Uh, this is the um, uh, storefront uh, uh, change that would occur. We would uh, possibly, uh, uh, in, in our master plan, what we are gonna show is the modification if they are necessary for new storefronts. If new storefronts have to go in for one reason or another in the building, they would be the same storefronts that were uh, placed in the building in the mid 1990s. And that is they would use all the existing, uh, uh, replicate and use the existing material that's currently there. These are steel uh, uh, storefronts. Uh, they'd be modified to have that 18 inch uh, uh, side light on the pull side of the door. So they are, all the storefronts can be uh, ADA compliant. 
And then on the right hand side, we're showing the sections, two sections through the storefront, one through the, actually the storefront, one through the doors. And you can see the dashed lines around the uh, uh, lower and upper portion. And I'll show you how, the, how those profiles, profiles work in terms of what we are proposing. So uh, this is a blog of those profiles. Um, on top is the existing profiles that exist for these storefronts on the bottom. Uh, is our uh, 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 proposed, uh, we would exactly replicate what is there today. No change to those, store, to those steel storefronts. Uh, all the profiling, the detailing would be, any new detailing, any new portions of that storefront that's needed would be replicated uh, in kind. So no, any modification would uh, exactly replicate uh, what is original and what is there today. Uh, the second uh, uh, possibility in terms of a, uh, a storefront is a flat storefront with a double set of doors. So we might need this because there's 10,500 square feet on the lower level that they, the owners, might want to utilize as retail space. In order to make that retail space work and for egress, right, we're going to need a double set of doors. Uh, within that space, obviously, they would need access to the lower level, so they would need an elevator and stair going down. Uh, egress would be right back up through their, their own lobby and also through the building lobby and out. Um, so what we are asking for is um, on both Broadway, on Fifth Avenue, and on 22nd Street is one of these two storefronts on each of these uh, building sides might be a double uh, uh, set of doors. So let's just take, for example, uh, storefront uh, 07 and 08, storefront seven and eight off of Fifth Avenue. Uh, there's the, uh, uh, what we're asking for is that one of those two might be a double set of doors, right? Uh, in order to handle uh, uh, egress and lobby entry to a retail, uh, 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 Retailer that would be down below in, in the cellar, right? We also want to leave open the possibility that could occur uh, on either on 22nd Street or on Broadway. We just don't know where it will be today. Uh, so we want that flexibility uh, to have that sort of possibility of that storefront on uh, one of these three sides in these locations. Uh, so what we're showing up above is the existing, what below is proposed. So, you know, uh, in theory, if you were to change out all these storefronts according to this master plan, that's basically the drawing below. Uh, and I'll go through it uh, storefront by storefront. Unlikely to ever happen, uh, 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 but here's what um, is proposed. In storefront 02 and storefront 04 and storefront 06, uh, uh, those would be the ones that uh, have put, uh, could potentially change to have that side light, right? So that those storefronts now all become ADA compliant as storefront five and storefront uh, uh, eight are now. On uh, storefront 07, that's one of the two possibilities, right? Uh, for a double set of doors. Right, and storefront 09 again could potentially be modified if it had to be, right, to have that sideline. This is 22nd Street. So, again, as we had talked about earlier, we wanted to leave open the possibility of storefront 12 or 13 being able to accommodate a double set of doors. We just showed it in storefront 13. And again, on Broadway, existing elevation up top, proposed on the bottom. And again, um, going from, let's say, uh, from storefront 16, from the left to the right, storefront 16, storefront 17, uh, could be modified uh, to have that uh, side light. So they're ADA compliant. You can see compared to the, the drawing right above it, which is not compliant at the moment. Uh, then we chose uh, storefront um, 
18 to have that double set of doors, uh, we are going to modify storefront 19. So 19 has that double set of doors. Uh, uh, they had removed a single door. They put in a double set of doors that were recessed further back uh, in order to make that their ADA, their, their uh, uh, ADA entry. We're going to put back the storefront that was originally there, the door, uh, the transoms there. We're going to put the door back that was originally there. That doesn't need a side light. That's an exit only. So we don't need it for ADA. We only need it for, for exiting from our stair. Uh, storefronts 20, 21, and 22 uh, uh, could be modified uh, in the future if there are a series of tenants that need uh, a side light to make them ADA compliant. The Sprint store is in there now uh, on the side of the building. If you notice their entry uh, is storefront 23 and that was modified and that does have the, uh, uh, the side light. Uh, uh, it's highly unlikely, I would think, in the future that uh, there are going to be, you know, 23 different tenants in this building. I think they want to maximize, you know, or try to minimize the amount of tenants that they that they have. So uh, basically, it just gives, I think, uh, the storefront uh, plan here. I think just gives uh, the flexibility uh, in the future if there has to be a change to one storefront or another uh, because of a retail change out that they can place in a door and sideline and make it ADA compliant. Uh, in terms of materiality for the, um, as Gaspari mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of the uh, entry doors, everything would be formed bronze, uh, profiling to match what was actually there originally. Uh, the bronze color would be a medium uh, 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 color bronze, um, insulated glass units, uh, low iron uh, for, uh, 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 for the arched windows, just to create maximum visibility and clarity uh, in the glass. Uh, all the storefronts are all painted black, they're all steel, They'll remain steel. Uh, they're all painted black and the same color will remain. It's original. Uh, next uh, part of uh, our presentation is the 21st floor. Uh, as so I Rich, yes. We are um, 42 minutes into the meeting. Uh, if there's any possibility to make the presentation a little more concise, I know that the, the part one and two were, uh, you know, pretty uh, expensive and we needed to spend the time, but if there's any way to contract it a little bit, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. I can. I thought everybody wanted to. Uh, <laughs> uh, since I was the only one on the agenda, I figured you wanted to have the full story. Okay, we'll go a little bit faster. No problem, and I'll be fair. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the two, you know, it originally did not have the 21st floor. Uh, 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 there was an attic story, which you can see with the small square windows, and you can see the mechanical equipment and the bulkhead equipment that was on that roof originally. Uh, here's the plan of the uh, 20 uh, uh, of that uh, original um, uh, 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 roofscape, again with mechanical equipment, uh, some of the bulkheads, and skylights uh, to the attic space. Uh, this is the existing condition of the 21st floor uh, roofscape. Uh, uh, the mechanic equipment was just brought up top. Uh, the skylights that did exist at one time were all removed. It was all boxed over. And you can also see on this building, a lot of those uh, 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 telephone uh, uh, um, uh, equipment that's on all the corners. That will all be removed. Um, here's a, 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 draw, um, a photograph from 1908. Uh, the 21st building, as I had described, was basically a utilitarian shed that was added uh, to the building for studio space for artists and, and a drafting room for uh, the Fuller Company. And you can see all the mechanical equipment uh, that was on the roof, the bulkheads, along with the skylights. Uh, it's all there. Uh, the skylights aren't, but you can see where it was boxed out. Uh, this was a, the original plan of that 21st floor. Uh, and I thought, just out of curiosity, there on the left uh, is 1903 photograph of the rooftop. Uh, without the uh, addition, and you can see uh, today uh, the same photograph with the addition. Oh, this is the plan uh, as it currently exists today, and as I had mentioned, you know, all new elevator in the buildings, all new stairs uh, and, and new bathrooms, and so the new layout cleans up the space, makes it much more habitable uh, 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 for commercial tenants, uh, has new stairs in it, a new elevator, and that will come up to this floor. And most importantly, 
they will be able to use the terrace space. You can't use the terrace space right now because of the uh, telephone equipment that's up there. It's also that terrace is about a foot, if not more, in depth from the floor of the 21st floor. You have to step down into it. It doesn't work currently. So this is a view inside that space today. And what we're playing, and, and then a typical bay, there are three windows per bay. Those windows were all changed out uh, years ago. Uh, they're just aluminum windows at this point. And what we would like to do is lower the window uh, two feet. So same width, windows would be the same width. We're not gonna change the pattern of windows. They're exactly the same. We're just gonna increase the depth of those windows by two feet in order to create, have more light, more visibility and more views out of this space So because it is now very habitable. Uh, you know, a view from the terrace, you can see the existing terrace, the balustrade to the left, the existing windows to the right, those aren't original windows. It's a stucco finish on the building today. That's not the original stucco finish. It was refinished uh, uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, this is what we are proposing. Again, windows, bringing the windows down a couple of feet, bringing the uh, terrace up, putting it on pedestals. Um, so it's uh, level with the floor inside, getting rid of all that equipment that's outside uh, so that it becomes habitable and then putting a glass rail on the, bal on the uh, balustrade side um, because those balustrades are more than four inches apart. So we need uh, uh, guardrail protection. And again, what we would like to do is also curve the end, make a brow, uh, similar to the building itself. Uh, you can see all the, you know, you can see all that equipment out there, all that will disappear. What we want to do is just curve uh, uh, the brow side and, and, and put a window in. And again, you can see the terrace is, is raised up. You can't see this window from anywhere. There's uh, where this photo, where we took the rendering, there is a brick wall that faces uh, 22nd Street and the, uh, and the park. So you wouldn't be able to see any of this. Uh, just a view of what exists today. Um, uh, the balustrade itself, the building and its windows. Our proposal in order to drop those windows another two feet, bring up the terrace uh, a foot or so, so it's level with the floor inside. Uh, just the elevation existing and uh, up top proposed on the bottom of Fifth Avenue. Elevation on 22nd Street. Elevation on Broadway. Top is existing, bottom is proposed. So no change to the window layouts. And then what I talked about earlier, the corner piece, we'd like, instead of squaring it off, you can see the existing plan to the left, proposed to the right. Existing plan is squared off. We'd like to just create a sort of brow uh, at the end with, with glass. Uh, the elevation uh, on top, existing, the section to its right, Elevation uh, proposed, uh, uh, and you can see the pedestals uh, 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 off the terrace. Window uh, width remains exactly the same uh, as before. And you can see two sections. I'm going to show you in a second uh, a blow up of those two sections. We are going to raise the parapet uh, by 18 inches. Uh, currently, this roof and, and, the, uh, and the walls are not insulated. We're going to have to add insulation to the roof of this building. Uh, it was designed as a shed. Uh, we want it to be, uh, you know, uh, occupiable. Uh, currently, the water drops off into a gutter system, and then there's leaders. It all drops into that terrace. What we want to do is create proper uh, uh, drainage from the build, from the roof itself, and bring it down through the building. So let me show you that detail, or just a section through the uh, both the existing and proposed. Uh, 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 brow uh, of the building and being able to curve it. And then just a detail of that section uh, of the power pit itself. Uh, what it's showing is that we need to insulate this, uh, uh, the 21st floor. We're gonna have rigid insulation on the outside uh, uh, with, with, uh, with stucco. Uh, we're gonna add about eight inches of insulation uh, to the roof and then a uh, uh, a cold fluid applied waterproofing on top of that, have the drainage on top of the roof, uh, and then we'll drain through the building and not out onto the, uh, 
uh, terrace itself, but the thickness of the wall will remain exactly the same. There's no change in terms of location of that wall either. We'll just uh, uh, put insulation inside, put rigid ins insulation on the outside, and then just drain it all the, the right way. So just a view again uh, 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 of that terrace space. Material would be stucco, same finish that was on there originally. Uh, uh, and then the windows themselves would be aluminum, but painted uh, that bronze color. The rail itself uh, uh, would be low iron glass in order to create uh, as much transparency uh, 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 through the rail, uh, through that space. Uh, last part is rooftop mechanical equipment. Uh, um, you can see the drawing on the left is the existing condition on the rooftop, uh, showing the blocked up skylights, the bulkhead that currently exists on the roof, and the skylight that's actually over the stair that goes down through the building right now. On the right is our proposal. I'll show you a blow up of it, of it in a second. We have to add cooling terrace since we've removed all the AC units, 612 AC units in the windows. We have a whole new HVAC, HVAC system. We'll have to have cooling towers on the on the roof. Now, uh, uh, after extensive study in terms of these units, we found the smallest ones we could possibly get, and we divided them, instead of having one large one, into three smaller ones. And we placed them in such a location to minimize its views from the, from the north and from the park and from Fifth Avenue. And I'll show you that in, in a minute. So a blow up of the roof, uh, uh, showing new co the cooling towers, uh, the exhaust fans, the flues, uh, and the potential to have solar panels uh, where we can on the rooftop, those solar panels uh, we're hoping uh, might be able to uh, uh, power the lights that would be in the lobby. Uh, if not, uh, in the future, this building might be, there might be some exterior lighting on the building. It may be used for uh, the power of that exterior uh, lighting at, at night. This is a section through that 21st floor. Top one is existing. You can see that exist, the existing building there that was added uh, back in 1905 and the bulkhead above it. The top of the bulkhead from the roof is about nine feet, three inches. We were able to get equipment actually that is no higher than nine feet, three inches. So the same height that's currently there today. Then an elevation showing the equipment. You can see on the top, the existing and the bulkhead equipment that's currently there. On the bottom is the new mechanical equipment for the roof. Again, just a view, elevation uh, existing on top from 22nd Street looking north and the view down below. Uh, again, same view from 22nd Street looking north. A view from Broadway, um, again, looking west. You can see the original skylights, they're now boxed up and the uh, MEP equipment on, on the roof and our proposal for new cooling towers uh, and flues. Uh, just a cut of the equipment that would go up there. Uh, it would be all stainless. And then we did a whole series of sightline studies around the entire building. Uh, so I'll walk you all around the neighborhood. Uh, uh, the drawing always on the left-hand side is the existing condition. The one on the center would be our proposal. And the one on the right is the mock-up. So we always compare the mock-up to the proposal. On the left-hand side, you'll always see a map. There's then a red triangle and that shows where the view is taken from. So the sight line on this page is from inside the park, um, uh, a little bit inside the park, looking back, looking, looking south to the building itself. Now, I colored all the mechanical equipment, both existing and proposed, red, so you can see it. If you're out there now, you, can, you can't see this stuff. It just, you know, basically disappears. But just so you can see it, if you look up at the upper uh, uh, left-hand photograph, on that roof, you'll see a little red dot. That's the, ex that's the existing mechanical equipment. I just always would color that red. The proposal, you can't see any of the equipment in our, in our proposal. And if you look on the right side, that green, if you look at the blow up down below, you'll see a little green. That's the power pit that we, we will raise up by 18 inches. Uh, Richard, are you able to use the, uh, the mouse as a pointer so that we can yes, see what you're- Sorry about that. Yes, I can. So Great, if you, you look at, that's right there, that green line, right? 
that, is, that shows that 18 inch increase in height for that parapet and to be able to drain that roof. If you look at this one, all the way to your left and you look at the, the, the mouse, that point right there, that little red, that's a mechanical equipment that's, that's there today that exists. So the next view is further in the center of the park. If you look at the little red uh, arrow there, you can see in the existing, this little red dot up there, one of the bulkheads and our proposal, you wouldn't see anything from that view. Is, is there any way, Richard, that you could enlarge these uh, images for us? If you go to view, you should have an option for full screen. That good? I'm gonna go larger. Well, so, some applicants have been able to sort of like uh, crop a particular section of an image to uh, blow yeah. that particular section okay. so that we can really see what you're referring to. Um, okay, no, well, well, some of the later ones I'll, I'll blow up so you can see them. Um, Okay, if you, this is the view from Fifth Avenue looking south. You're at 25th Street. So right there, if you look at the cursor at the bottom left, that's the view looking south to the building. And again, in all, in all cases, you don't see any equipment on that roof. This is a view further back on Fifth Avenue towards 28th Street. So you're at 28th Street, Fifth Avenue looking back. If you go all the way to your, uh, uh, left, and if you look at the little hand there, you can see existing, some is existing equipment. If you go to the center, the proposed, you don't see any equipment on, on the roof. Um, Richard? Yes. If you could just pan up a little bit so they could see the uh, green um, on the enlargements below. Pan up or down? Uh, pan, uh, they're being, oh, there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, sorry. So uh, just yeah. so you can see that the, uh, if you could point at it, Richard, yeah, I mean, the, the green portion, that would be the extended parapet. Right there, the uh, green up, portion right there. Which you would see, but it would be matching the uh, material of the existing um, penthouse uh, as stucco, and we would get rid of that uh, aluminum uh, gutter, which runs all the way across and just put in a cap on top of it, which would be in, in uh, aluminum but in the bronze color to match right. the windows. Okay, so let's go. Uh, this one I want on Broadway. So lower left, you can see the little map, little arrow. You're at 25th and Broadway. Looking back at the boat, you know. In any case, you don't see anything on the rooftop, uh, existing or proposed. Uh, this view is on 23rd Street, uh, near uh, near Six, uh, right there, uh, uh, looking uh, east to the building, right? You can see, if you look at my cursor, you can see a couple of the old bulkheads that were for the skylight. And you can see on the proposed, one of the flues at that location right there in the center, in the center. Oh, there's a blow up down below. So you can see the flue right there as we had proposed. Here's a view a little bit closer, mid block now between fifth and sixth, looking back towards the building. Uh, the photo on the on the left shows existing mechanical. On the right shows proposed. And again, existing you don't see anything. On proposed, you see a little bit of one of the existing cooling cooling towers. Uh, when you're up close, uh, uh, right on uh, right on fifth on that corner, you don't see anything in either case. Uh, we did the same thing on 22nd uh, Street, again, looking east on the, on the uh, left. Uh, again, some of the existing bulkhead on the middle is proposed right there. A little bit closer, you sort of mid block between uh, 6th and 5th, uh, looking east, again, existing and proposed in the middle. Uh, when you're right at the corner, uh, you don't see anything on, on uh, either existing or proposed. 
So then we went to Fifth Avenue. So you're fifth all the way at 20th Street. You're looking north. Uh, all the way on the left is existing. You can see the bulkhead, existing bulkhead. The middle is proposed. You don't see any equipment on Fifth Avenue looking north on this view. Uh, even further back uh, towards uh, uh, 16th Street, uh, 17th Street, again, uh, existing, see some of the bulkhead on uh, proposed, it's, 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 it's reduced and, and you see a lot less of it. Uh, uh, further back uh, uh, on fifth, look, look, looking north again, existing uh, to the left, proposed on the right. Uh, we took a couple of views down Broadway. You're looking north uh, from Broadway down to the buildings. You don't see anything on the roof. As you get closer, you don't see anything. Uh, we then took a view on 22nd Street, looking, uh, looking west uh, on the left proposed. On the middle is, is uh, sorry, on the left is existing. On the, on the middle is proposed. Uh, you get a little bit closer to the building on 22nd, existing, and basically just cap, you see a little bit of a corner. You can see it down below in the, uh, the blow up, that little bit, that little corner right there. Uh, uh, mid block 22nd, again, you can see some of the, sorry, the existing and nothing on the proposed. Uh, closer up on the corner, nothing. Either, in either case. Uh, we then took a view on 23rd Street. You're looking west at the corner. You don't, you don't see anything existing or proposed. Uh, we went back uh, on Madison Avenue uh, by 20, between 24th and 25th. Again, on the left, you see some of the bulkhead. On the right, you see a, if you look down below at the blow up, you just catch a little bit of a corner of two of the pieces of equipment. One is actually the flu. Again, if you could pan up slightly because it's cutting off at the Sorry. bottom. There you go. There it is. One is the flu and you see it's just slightly a little bit of a corner. Uh, we went all the way to the cor corner of the park, right? There's the uh, uh, existing and there is the proposed and you can see you pan up a little bit, you can see a little bit of the corner of the equipment and, and one of the flues. And that's it. We made it through. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. <laughs> I know we, we had a, a, a lot of ground to, to cover. Thank you for a, a very thorough and uh, very informative uh, presentation. So uh, as I said in my preamble, we're going to open up the floor to uh, questions uh, from members of the committee. Uh, so please use your uh, raise hand uh, button so I can identify uh, who has a question. So go ahead, members of the committee, any questions? Um, and I see Barbara has her hand up. Barbara, unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, so I wanted to ask a question um, going back to the first presentation um, uh, with the lobby doors. Um, so if we can go back, um, I wanted to, you know, when you compare the original to what you're proposing, uh -huh. um, you know, was there any thought about having um, those, because there's, so if you look at the original, there's, it's, it's really divided up into really threes. There's that lower transit, there and there's the above. Right. Did, you, uh, did you explore, dividing it up in that way. Um, and I know that you, you, you referenced that the larger doors um, are, you feel are in keeping with the scale of the facade. It's just that the lobby is so small and I was really struck by the image of the revolving door yeah. from the inside of the lobby. So, yeah, good point. Uh, uh, the, the lobby is very small, right? It's rather constrained. Um, uh, uh, we wanted to create as much visibility and openness as possible. I think that was important to us. 
in order to get that actually have visibilities through the building from Fifth Avenue all the way to Broadway. Um, and that we also thought that, you know, by uh, replicating, closely replicating what was there originally on that ceiling, right, we wanted to make it pretty visible uh, from the sidewalk itself. Um, uh, uh, I think that was the reason, you know, that I think the, the feeling for us was that this, this lobby, because of it, it, because it appears so constrained, we want to create as much transparency and visibility as possible, right? And that the one major element that we thought was important was that transom that went across. Yes, um, but if you actually had sh um, shorter doors, um, which aren't that short, uh, and you just had a sort of broke it at that, um, you know, right above the door and then have the transom, I'm not saying eliminate the transom or change anything. I think that's all a very good move. Um, it, it's just a scale issue, and and I guess it's it, it's not that I'm so beholden necessarily to what was originally there, although other people may feel that that is a good sort of roadmap. Um, it's more that I think it's a very different scale from the inside than it is on the outside, given how small the space is. It seems somewhat overwhelming on the inside, um, but. You know that that's uh, that was my question. It's not really in in comments. I think. Thanks. And just as uh, for for full disclosure, um, I worked at Richard's firm about I don't know twenty two years yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember. All right. Th thank you. Uh, next question from uh, Sarah Sarah Dawson. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Um, I was uh, looking at the, uh, your presentation about the 21st floor, and I saw a lot of writing about um, painted aluminum. Where did that come in? In the 1950s renovation? In the 1980s renovation? Yeah, it was, it was the 1990s renovation. Okay. Or was it the... I think but I mean, is that again. kosher? No, is that, the, the uh, the replacement double hung windows were uh, and the new stucco exterior was done in the two uh, thousands. Uh, so I all see. of this was there were originally wood windows we assume, uh, but they replaced them all uh, as I said in the two thousands with these painted aluminum uh, balance windows, which yeah. um, are not the uh, most aesthetically <laughs> pleasing windows in the world. <laughs> Uh, you know, from the ground, uh, from the street, you don't really see them because uh, they've remained the box, but from uh, a use point from the interior, they're not terrific. And then also the fact that when they re the exterior, they did put on a, uh, uh, a water and vapor barrier, a very heavy one, but they actually did not include any additional, any actual insulation. <laughs> Uh, I had one of these walls opened up just to look at how it was constructed. Uh, and even though, yeah, there's a three coat stucco exterior on lab and there is a waterproofing vapor barrier membrane, there is no insulation in these walls. So uh, when we're looking to redo all of this, uh, you know, we want to bring it up to current standards in regards to in insulation, construction, and also since you don't really see the bottom of these windows uh, from above these balustrades, which are very, very high. This balustrade is uh, more than six feet tall uh, from the ground. We uh, came to the conclusion that opening up the windows more, putting in a fixed and large uh, casement windows would really be the best way to go for the uh, actual penthouse itself. Uh, and from the ground, uh, it wouldn't really look any different than it does now in terms of the depth of the openings, the size of the openings, where the top of the openings are. So that's well, I was, in this place. I was just curious. I was just curious about the material aluminum and landmark. And aluminum was not invented, I don't think, in 1901. Oh, no, and, no. Uh, no, no. I know I'm not questioning the solar panels. I love those, but I it just set off a question mark. <laughs> thank you. Okay, th thank you. Uh, next question from uh, Tony. Tony, unmute yourself and go ahead. 
Sure. Thanks, Leila, and thanks, Richard and Gaspari, for such sure. a great presentation. Um, going back to the lobby first, Leila, I have a, I have a few questions. Um, going back to the, uh, the lobby itself, regarding the doors, um, are they going to be solid bronze? Are they uh, bronze paneling? Are they painted bronze? No, it's all it's 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 uh, uh, formed bronze. Solid bronze. Solid bronze. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, looking at the arch transom, and I have to ask. I mean, just because sometimes you, once in a while, you guys digging around when you're doing the renovations, you'll find this stuff. Was there any trace of the original grill work that was in that transom? Oh, it's all gone. None. Yeah. None. Did, did you guys ever consider replicating that? Uh, we looked at it. I think the feeling was that, uh, as Barbara's question, right? We just wanted to keep this thing as as, as simple, as transparent, as open, uh, sure, uh, sure. and have a sense of what, uh, some degree of lightness to it. Okay. Sure. Thanks. Um, moving to the retail space, um, wherever you're putting the double doors, it appears. And again, this is if you need them in the future. Uh, it appears you'll be removing original base door fronts or, or some of the original flat fronts uh, on 22nd Street. Um, you won't really be able to reuse that material, right? Because you'll be bringing in doors now. What will you do with that material, the original bays and the original uh, window configuration? Let me just get... I would replicate the the, the the framing of the doors. The doors themselves would be the same doors, right? The we would, we would replicate the, the same doors that are currently in the building. Okay. Right. All those sure. doors were actually reclaimed. Actually, all those doors were redone hmm. back. Uh, this morning, how long ago? The doors, all the doors, all the storefront doors were replaced at the same time uh, in two thousand uh, yeah. with uh, doors that were in kind as to what was originally there. Right. I would say that if they needed to remove a bay window, they would. We would suggest storing the uh, material so it could be used in the future. Right. Anything we can keep, we're gonna we'll, we'll reuse. Right. And anything that we, we have to recreate, we would just do it in kind. Right. Okay. And, and Gaspar, that leads me to my next question, I guess, because if that tenant then moves out and you no longer need double doors, you're putting back a, a bay. Um, our hope is that you would have some of that original material left because that would be a lot that you would want to put back. Yeah. Um, regarding the 21st floor, um, is there going to be any exterior lighting or up lighting sitting on the new terrace that's, that's shining up on the addition? No, at the, at, at the moment, there's no plans for exterior lighting in the building. Okay. And I know you said it potentially in the future, potentially, uh, yes. that that might be something. Okay. Uh, but nothing with this application. Um, and I have to ask, are you guys um, changing any other windows other than the penthouse level? No, we're, all those windows were replaced. Uh, they, uh, are they aluminum or are they wood, the replacements? They're aluminum now. That they are all aluminum? I think. All right. Gus I saw they're know, painted. <laughs> I think they were replaced with aluminum windows. Yeah, the only, the only windows that were actually refurbished on the body of the building mm. were the round windows at the prow and the round curved windows at the southeast and southwest corners. Those were actually removed and refurbished and reinstalled, but all the other windows all right. were replaced. All right, thank you. Layla, you know, I had to ask that. I'm all set with questions, thank you. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you for asking because uh, you know that uh, I share those concerns. Uh, next question from uh, Renee Cafaro. Renee, unmute yourself, go ahead. Uh, great, um, can you guys hear me? Yes. I can't see myself because yes. I'm on my phone, so I don't know. Um, so uh, Tony kind of stole my thunder a little bit on the, the bronze and the transom and reusing of materials. Um, so um, I guess I'll go to light. He kind of stole my thunder on that, but the in, on the from the lobby, um, though sometimes the lighting inside of the interior is not in our purview since you guys have been really stressing how uh, light and airy you wanted that entryway to be and how bright it does appear. I understand they usually look brighter in the elevations. Um, how much light are we expecting it to, to cast more than it is now? You know, um, if it's going to be a cool, bright, kind of non-contextual light that will flood the street, or if it will, you know, will look, I just try to make sure it's not gonna look out of context, um, just even coming out of the, the entryways. So um, I think that would be sort of my concern. And I have a, another quick question, which 
though it's not discussed in this master plan at all because we're talking about storefronts, um, with the all the changes that you're going to be doing, I assume that you'll have very minimal um, uh, impact on the, the the masonry. But the way the building looks now, over time, as it's been patched and um, the masonry and the limestone has been changed over time, um, it's kind of a, a modeled uh, different colors throughout. And I was wondering if you guys had a plan on doing any sandblasting or something like that to kind of even it out once you guys are all done with your master plan. Yeah, so we're not involved in the, uh, on the local 11 or the restoration of the terracotta on the building. Okay. So I don't, I can't, that one I can't answer for you uh, uh, um, because we're just, that's not in our scope of work. Fair uh, enough, but yeah. But, but in terms of the lobby itself, the clients share the, uh, our clients uh, share your same concern. They don't want it as a lantern on the street, right? And they want it somewhat, you know, at night uh, to play to play a role in terms of identifying the lobby itself, but not have it out of context. So uh, no, it won't be, although it's shown very, very bright, and although we want people to, you know, uh, uh, to be able to see into it at night, it wouldn't be something that uh, uh, we'd be very careful in terms of the lighting of it. So it doesn't spill out, you know, uh, uh, like some lantern onto onto fifth onto fifth or Broadway, so lighting is something we haven't at at this point in terms of the lobby uh, looked at in detail, but uh, uh, I think everybody wants to be very careful about uh, 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 the uh, how bright it is and the tonality of that lighting, the warmth of the lighting. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Renee. Uh, next question, uh, Mike, Mike Kayback, uh, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, hi, Richard, great presentation. I'm a big fan of the Flatiron Building. Uh -huh. did, you, did you say that the original windows were designed flat and then the bay windows were put in because of the wind? Yeah, so okay. we're not, we're unsure. They were all desi obviously designed flat. It shows up in all their drawings, all the renderings. We think two things could have happened. Either they did not build them as flat, they put in the, the bay windows immediately when they were building it, or something happened very quickly or soon after the opening in which they had to change them out, right? But, I but, yeah, but it appears when you look at one of the photographs we found dated 1902 that they appear as bay windows. So my gut feeling is most likely, maybe they tried it, saw in a couple, and because there were such large windows and because of the wind load at that location, somehow or another, they changed them out and made bay windows fairly quickly. Bay windows are more stable, uh, and, you know, and, and structurally we are able to handle the wind uh, so, at that location. So here's there my is, question. Here's my is, question. Oh, sorry. Okay. The question is, has any thought been given to replacing the bay windows with flat windows again due to all the construction nearby and the uh, abatement of the strong winds? No, I think what we want to do um, uh, is keep the existing, those storefronts are, you know, whether they were there from day one or they were there from day two, they're basically original, the bay windows. We want to keep them all in place. I don't want to change them out. Um, I, I think it's important to keep what's there. I think it's important that, you know, there are minimal changes that are made just as they are if a, if a retailer changes out and if they need ADA access then they can change the storefront but I think we would tr it would be my feeling to keep those storefronts the way they are you know uh, uh, for as long as they you know for, for as long as possible thank you thanks Michael thank you uh, next question from uh, Karen Pedrazzi Karen go ahead Hi, I have um, a few questions on three aspects of your four-part proposal. I'll start with the one you have the slide up for. Um, if you could, uh, um, I'm curious, who is the user on the roof? Is that like a private tenant amenity or might that be open to the public? And I'm curious about the selection of glass. I understand the benefit of being minimal and transparent, but it also, even though it's not visible from the right away, it's um, a very modern, um, expression in a glass guardrail detail. That's, that's the first one. Uh, um, let's do the, guard, the guardrail. Um, 
I think, you know, the, the, th the balustrade is about two and a half feet thick, right? You'll never see this actually from anywhere on, on the ground, you know, because of your angle, right? And we're angle looking up. Uh, uh, we thought, uh, the, you know, the balustrade, when you look at it, there was one view we did. There, right? I think it's one way just of making it as clear, as transparent as possible from the inside. And that was the reason we chose, we thought, let's keep it as simple as minimal and uh, as clear a, a, as possible. Okay, okay fair enough. And, and who are the users? Well, it's not gonna be open to the public. So the user is gonna be either a tenant who, who occupies that space, right? Or an, uh, possibly an amenity for some tenant in the building. I don't, okay. right? I have no yeah. idea at this point. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was curiosity. You just um, to make sure it's habitable, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I wanna go up there myself. That's why I was hoping it was open to the public. Maybe we'll get an invitation, friends, yeah, of, uh, I mean, fr friends of the flat iron. Uh -huh. If we can get you up there, it's a great, the views are incredible to walk out of that terrace. It's pretty amazing. I'm sure Layla will pull our strip, pull yeah. some strings for us. Yes. Um, the next question is about the lobby. I think it was about slide 17. Uh -huh. um, I echo some of the other th thoughts that we'll, we'll leave that for comments about the grill work. But my question is specific to the ADA compliant doors. So I, I appreciate they're now um, wide, you know, the three feet wide, but they are oh, 10 feet tall. And with solid bronze, I can't imagine that those are operable. Um, how do you plan to operate them to comply with ADA? And will you have, if you could speak a little bit about, are they power assist or fully automated? And where will the, the push button devices and paddles be? No, you can make these doors center pivot so that you, they are easily and with, and with uh, uh, easily to open, right? Um, uh, uh, they can be designed in such a way that they're, uh, 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 totally uh, and easily uh, uh, opened, even if they're ten feet tall. I, I'm I I trust you, because, yeah. but I'm surprised a ten foot high bronze door could be yeah. operated to withstand the pull force of uh, a person with a disability. You can do it if they're balanced doors. We can easily achieve that. But even with balanced doors, then we do a power assist, if not fully automated. Well, if there was uh, technically, if there was a, a, an issue as this thing goes into design, then certainly they would be power assisted. And you would, I'm sure, discreetly right. locate the, the operating device. Yes. Um, just let's say it goes that way. Um, would it be a freestanding pedestal or would it be mounted into yeah. the limestone or terracotta? Yeah, you'd, you'd mount it into the wall adjacent to it right? uh, or, to the, or to the side of the door. Okay. Okay, um, but just might like to think ahead because those are the details that come back yeah. later that you know get glossed over in the beginning. Um, my next question is about the mock-up on the roof. So I we I know we I know we only saw a little bit of the cooling tower, and I understand the benefits of going to a fully um, modern mechanical HVAC system, but um, is there anything that's going away? Like, are we losing window air conditioning units or grills or louvers in the windows. And then the second part of that question is, what were those metal brackets we saw in one of the renderings? Oh, so you're, you're, you're losing 612 window units. They're out, they're gone. Awesome. Right? It's a good thing to point out to the committee because I don't think that was mentioned. Yeah, no, I, I, at the beginning, right? I mean, uh, oh, okay. you know, the biggest change right, on the exterior of the building is the elimination of those 600 plus you know, AC units. Okay. The, the bracket that you, you saw sticking out was the uh, the ladder to the roof. Yeah. Right from the no, in the mock-up, it looked like um, like an antenna antenna bracket, like Kindorf, like a T shape with a oh, U no, shape. No, 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 that's the drops for the uh, restoration. Oh, the, I understand. Yeah, right. Those things, the ones that's, that are popping out, are that's the, not part of the mock-up. Okay. It's not part of what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You've answered all my questions. Thank you. Um, Barbara has a follow-up question. Go ahead, Barbara. I just wanted to ask a question. So going back to the master plan for the storefront, 
was um, there any attempt, I mean, was there any way you could fit uh, the ADA doors, uh, or the egress doors, their egress doors, um, without removing the storefront and going from the, the bay to the flat? No, we had to, no, the, we need that, uh, that 18 inches on the pole side. Yeah. Right. There was nothing you could do. No, right, because they're all set back too. Right, yeah. they're not right. They're not flush. They're set back, you know, eighteen inches or so too. So, but uh, even like moving them to like the center of the bay, you know, sort of off center. I don't. I don't know if you explored any other option. You know, you know I. You know, at this point, there's already three storefronts that have been changed out. Oh. Right. So you know, to be consistent, I don't want a fourth. You know, I don't think we want another type. Trying mm -hmm. to you know not have another type. So I think basically. The idea was let's take that which was already approved by LPC. It's been in place for you know 20 years. Let's use that as the model. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thank you, Barbara. Um, any further questions from uh, members of the committee? I actually have a couple of questions of my own. Um, so it looks like uh, you are uh, creating a master plan that is going to give you the option of uh, creating more um, uh, retail uh, entities that would be smaller. Um, that could lead to the proliferation of signage. Um, do you have a master plan for signage? No, so the, the, actually we don't want to create, the, 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 our clients don't want to actually create more retail in the building. In fact, they want to create less retail so that you know retail would be a lot would take up more square footage. You know, one or two tenants would take up more square footage. Um, the master plan gives the option, depending on how ultimately this gets demised, right? There may have to be a change in one of the storefronts to make make that retail space ADA compliant. Right? No, I don't at the moment have a uh, um, a, uh, uh, a master plan for the uh, for, for signage. I assume that um, uh, the signage would obviously you know comply with AD, with uh, LPC rules, right? And and I would assume there's one in place right now. If is not, is there a, a currently a, a master plan yeah. for signage? I think that's a good question. I think it's a really good question. Uh, let me go back to, uh, let me find out. We'll find out from okay. team. We'll work and we will work with staff on that. Right. Okay. On the, on okay. The yeah. I, I think that the, uh, the, the, you know, like sheer compliance with the, you know, the, the base uh, regulations, um, I think would be, you know, a, a missed opportunity to really do it right. Yeah. I think it's one of those iconic buildings that really is begging for, uh, you know, some unified signage rather than, you know, the sort of piecemeal uh, blade sign here and there yes. um, that, that could look really cacophonous. I totally agree with you. Let me go back. Let, let, we, will, we will have that discussion with, with staff. Uh, I think it's Fantastic. a great point. You know, we do it in all our other buildings and you're right. We want it to be consistent. We'll do. Thank you. Um, my other question um, to uh, echo actually uh, Karen's question. Um, so the, you know, it, it looks like there may be still some uncertainty about the opening mechanism uh, for the uh, ADA doors. Uh, would you agree with us and then with LPC uh, to install this opening mechanism, whatever it may be, uh, without doing any penetration into the masonry and the stone uh, facade of the building? Yeah, we would agree with that. We would certainly study okay. that. Yes. Okay, great. I, I think that would make us feel much you know, more at ease knowing that you're not going to you know, punch a hole into the, uh, the, the limestone or the terracotta. Uh, to put the uh, the opening mechanism if it were needed, uh, you know, for for such a uh, uh, purpose. Yeah, we would. Um, my other, I have another question about um, more about use. So, is the intention to actually repurpose the the existing basement of uh, the the building and turn it into usable retail space? That's their plan. That potentially, that's their plan. There is okay. Yeah, there is, is ten thousand. 
yeah, I mean, it's, it's massive. Is there any plan and intention to uh, return it to its original use as a restaurant? I think a restaurant, it might be a possibility. I don't know. Um, I don't think they've okay. gotten that far in marketing the building, uh, nor, nor talking to any tenants at this point. Um, so I think that's, that's open. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, another question, sort of like a, a, a detail that caught my eye and just, uh, it's just itching me. So I have to ask on page 50 there, you're showing a, a historic photograph uh, page, um, of uh, the, of the roof. Lila page. Page 50, five zero. Yeah. Okay. Five zero. Yeah. Okay. So um, this uh, pole that we see, is this a flagpole? That was a flagpole originally. Where, where is it? And are you planning to reintroduce it? No, I guess I don't know when it disappeared. Uh, uh, um, there's no plans at the moment to, uh, uh, to reinstall it. Uh, is that something that the uh, uh, applicant would consider? I, we can talk to him about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it does look like, the, you know, the brow of a, a sail ship, too. <laughs> uh, yes. Ab yeah, yeah we, absolutely. You know, it, it's so dramatic. It is. Um, it's very dramatic. Um, let's find out, <laughs> we'll find out more about it. Uh, uh, let's, we'll do a little more research, find out a little bit more about it, and see if we can find any historic photographs of it, you know, and, and, and what they had on it. Um, uh, and then let me go back, and we'll, we will talk with our clients about it. Okay. Um, okay, that actually uh, concludes uh, the questions that I had. I just want to make sure that uh, we don't have any further questions from uh, members of the committee. Uh, any more questions, members of the committee, before I open up the floor to uh, members of the public? Uh, okay, so seeing none, um, I'm going to open up the floor to members of the public. Members of the public, if you wish to speak, whether you have a question, clarification, or a comment uh, in opposition or in support, uh, you can use the raise hand uh, function uh, to notify that you would like to be uh, recognized, and then Luke will allow you to speak. Um, so members of the public, do we have any questions or comments? Okay, so seeing none, let's move back to a uh, business session. And during business session, as I said, only members of the committee are allowed to speak. And uh, we are uh, going to make comments and uh, hopefully come to a uh, resolution on this application. Uh, so same thing, please use your uh, raise hand uh, button uh, so that you can make a comment. And I'm not, not going to say whether if you wish to make a comment, you must make a comment because that's what we do. So we need opinions on, on this matter. Uh, any comments? Uh, Tony, go ahead. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> just grabbing my notes. I mean, overall, there's, there's obviously a lot that's going on here. Um, a very, very in-depth application. Overall, uh, there's a major positive changes here. You know, every time I walk by the lobby, the lobby entrance. I mean, I cringe. The giant security cameras just stuck up there, and the aluminum everywhere, and the crazy just shapes. Um, you know, I, I like right away. I noticed that they're they're reintroducing that um, the transom divider, the main header. They're bringing back that original sight line, which I think is huge. Of course, I would have loved to see the pattern bronze uh, detail come back, but. Uh, the lobby entrances are a dramatic change from what's there now in a positive direction. I think that that's a big plus. Um, you know, the the rooftop addition, it, it, I went back and forth on a few issues. Um, overall, the design, I think, is fine. It's much sleeker. And by sleeker, I mean less intrusive, in my opinion. Um, they're getting rid of all that clutter at the top, at the front, all the phone antennas, which are such an eyesore. Every time I look up at that, that's one of the first things that stand out. Um, they're push, pushing some of the mechanicals back, which is great. Um, the, the addition itself, it is noticeable. Um, there's no denying that. 
it's more noticeable in very specific directions. Um, but the fact that it's a clean line going all the way around or all the way across the top, if you're looking up at it, I guess to me that that kind of eased the pain. And that's also why I asked if it would be lit. I think if it were lit, it would, it would definitely make it more noticeable and, and certainly a bigger problem. Um, so the visibility, I think because they're reducing a lot of the mechanical uh, uh, distraction that's up there, I think that that's a huge plus. Um, the addition itself, the, the elongated windows, um, raising the terrace, all of that stuff, you know, it, it didn't seem to, to have a huge impact on me. The visibility is there, so I'm kind of back and forth with it, but I think it's a cleaner look overall. So um, just to be clear, um, my understanding of the, uh, of the proposal is that the, uh, the penthouse actually is existing. They are recladding it and altering it, but they're not really adding another floor. Right, so going through the notes, and I, I don't know if you wanna let Richard jump in at all, but it looked like the actual roof height, the overall height itself looked to be unchanging of the top of the mechanicals that height and then the proposed height looked to be the same. And if I read correctly, the roof line looked to be a foot and a half higher. Yes. Then, okay. So, so it is going to be about a foot and a half higher, but um, again, it's going to be a cleaner, smoother line all the way, uh, again, going across if you're looking up at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're extending it. They're not adding on, on to it. Correct. Uh, th thank you, Tony, for the, yeah, for, for the clarification. Um, okay, so if I hear you, basically the um, the, the the point of possible uh, contention, if it, and that may even be a, a strong word, but uh, the areas of, of concern, let's say, are um, the uh, lack of reintroduction of the bronze grill, um, and uh, you know the. And definitely, you know, the question that we're going to have to uh, to explore is uh, whether we are comfortable with the visibility of uh, the proposed 21st floor. Um, as Tony uh, underscored, you know, it's going to be raised a little bit. Um, it is some of the mechanical equipment disappears that is currently there. Some of the mechanical equipment that was not there actually appears in certain areas, but overall, it's a net loss of visibility, which is great, um, and uh, it's going to be much cleaner. So I think th those you know, to to sort of like start to frame the the questions that are in front of us. Um, this is what what we're going to be uh, dealing with. I would also love to hear comments about the use of glass as um, the uh, the guardrail. Um, and I see that uh, Barbara has her hand up. Barbara, go ahead. Um, well, I agree with Tony. Overall, I, I think that there are many positive changes to uh, that um, the architect uh, presented. Um, I, I, addressing the guardrail, I, I don't really feel that it will be very visible, certainly from the outside. That doesn't... Um, uh, the the top edition actually um, doesn't bother me. I don't have any reservations about it, um, either with the increase in the height or the guardrail. I mean, they need to do something, and I think probably the glass will be have the least amount of impact in in terms of visibility, um, not just from the inside of the space, but also you know potentially looking up. Um, I think my only hesitation is the 10 foot doors going into the lobby. I, again, I, for, I just feel like it's a little off scale for me. Um, I'm not so much uh, focused on the grill work, although I can understand that there may be a desire on, uh, on some of the members of the committee to you know, render it in a more truly historic fashion. But I just feel the scale of the doors seem really off to me. Um, and and as much from the inside uh, for, of the lobby as the, as the outside. Um, but maybe that's, maybe from the inside of the lobby, we don't necessarily address, but um, even from the outside, it, it seems a little, I think that you could have the maximum visibility if indeed that's what we are recommending and still uh, have a uh, have a scale that is more appropriate to the original building. So that's really my comment. But overall, very, you know, a lot of positive changes um, and um, certainly a very thorough presentation. 
Barbara. Uh, next uh, comment from uh, Renee Cafaro. Renee, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so um, I mean, I think overall, this is a fine application. Um, I would echo what uh, Tony says. And I think my, my main concern is really the bronze grill work. I think that Barbara's issues about the monstrosity of the doors, like they are a little out of scale, which would be fixed if they brought in, in the transom that had the bronze grill work. Um, I think that would be more in keeping with what we know of the Flatiron building and how important that grill work really is. Um, yeah, I think that would that would be the best way to go about it. Um, and when you, to your point on the, the, the parapet wall uh, being glass, I'm actually okay with it since it's not gonna be lit. I don't think they're gonna have the glare of seeing that the that is glass from afar. So I'm actually okay with that. So if you're asking for comments on that, I'm actually all right with this. My real sticking point was really the bronze and also like what they're gonna be doing with uh, anything, anything historic that they're removing. Um, even the stuff that they are removing that's not, wasn't there during designation, um, but has been there for decades. I, we still should be concerned about where they're going to be keeping that, if they're going to store it, if they want to bring back a different functionality of the windows in some further point down the road. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Karen. Um, I'm very much in favor of the application, but some of, some of my thoughts uh, I think maybe also because we have the time and this is such a special New York City gem, um, you know, warrant further comment that, you know, this isn't really a design proposal. It's, I, I see it more of as an edit and a correction of some of the things that have accumulated over the last hundred years. And, you know, want to appreciate and point out that by the owners of the building investing in something like a cooling tower and upgrading the infrastructure, is such an enormous investment that we really need to appreciate appreciate that, and um, you know, to modernize a building like this is just a big, a big, big undertaking. And I really appreciate that. And I feel like they've their design proposal, where where they did have to insert design, is very elegant and minimal and very neutral. I mean, I think it's not specific for any tenant, and it's it's you know I appreciate that. Um, you know, and in conjunction with the local law work, which we've seen them doing, even though that's not this applicants uh, before us, you know, combined with that, they're bringing this building to like a class A landmark. So they've been great stewards and I appreciate that. There's one um, topic I wanted to bring up. It's a little bit more philosophical than architectural, but it's about the discussion of inclusive design and it's so current right now. And I just wondered, um, it's something for, for, for us to think about why only one door is accessible and not both Broadway and Fifth Avenue are. And this may not really be under a landmark's purview, but it is something we need to think more and more about because we're seeing this and our tenants and clients and the public is demanding it. You know, if you enter on Broadway, you have to go around the block to Fifth Avenue and vice or vice versa. And that's just something for us to consider. Should we be asking for more and not just the minimum? And kind of as an advocate for inclusive design, I just want to put that thought out there. Yeah, th thank you, Karen. Um, any other uh, comments from uh, members of the committee? No more? All right, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I'm also very much in favor of, uh, of this application. Um, you know, I think it's very important that uh, our landmarks uh, remain current. And, you know, I've, I've often uh, spoken about buildings being good citizens. And we want these landmark buildings to remain good citizens, meaning that they are uh, thriving, they are, uh, you know, renting to good tenants, they are attracting, uh, you know, good business, generating good tax revenue. This is very important uh, for, for the city. So as Karen said, uh, the applicant is actually undertaking a, a really big job. Um, you know, the loss of these uh, uh, AC units in, in the windows is huge. Um, and I would totally trade, you know, the, this, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, removal of these eyesores for, you know, a tiny bit of visibility on, on the roof. It's a totally acceptable uh, trade-off. Uh, increasing the height of the, uh, of the 21st floor um, is also something that, 
uh, I can live with. I don't think that it detracts from any of the uh, of the facades of uh, of the building. You know, it's one of those buildings that only have our primary facades, <laughs> and um, I don't think that it's going to have. You know, this increase in height is modest, is tasteful, and is not going to have a, a negative impact on the appreciation of uh, of the facades. Um, the um, you know, the, I, I'm a little bit on the fence on the um, on the glass rail, but I think I'm the only one, and you know, I can uh, I can live with it. Uh, hopefully, it will not have any uh, you know any glare that would be uh, that would be visible. Uh, hopefully, the applicant will not decide to introduce lighting that would make this uh, this top floor uh, glow in a way that would be uh, you know inappropriate for for the building. I actually personally hope that the building will be lit, that the facade of the building Building will be lit. Uh, you know, being a, a native of Paris, um, I always feel um, that it's a little strange that we don't highlight such beauty at night. Um, so hopefully, uh, the applicant will undertake this, uh, um, you know, ne next uh, improvement. Um, and uh, on the proportion of the doors, I really hear what Barbara is saying. I think that um, there is a little bit of a, a scale issue, but overall, um, you know, making these uh, entrances, uh, you know, so much better than what they are currently is, uh, I, I see it as being good enough. Maybe we should be, hold ourselves to higher standards, but honestly, you know, walking by these revolving doors, uh, especially the one on Fifth Avenue, just, it just, as Tony said, you know, it makes me cringe. So I'm very happy to see this improvement and, um, and I'm happy to sort of like fall short of what I agree uh, Barbara is, uh, as, as Barbara is suggesting, would be a better scale, uh, but overall I can, I can live with it. Um, so th those are uh, my comments. I don't know if we want to include any language about the uh, the flagpole. Um, you know, I raised the, uh, the the question, but I don't know if other members of the community feel that it would be a, a good addition to actually have a flagpole and a flag. Um, you know, historically it, it was there, uh, but that doesn't mean that you know we, we should uh, ask for the reintroduction of this uh, element that is not even part of the uh, uh, application. Um, I would like the resolution to uh, have some language about the uh, opening mechanism to the ADA uh, doors so that uh, they do not intrude into the, uh, the masonry and the applicant has committed to that. Um, and um, also, I think our resolution should include some language about a uh, signage master plan that uh, we would uh, urge the applicant to come up with if it doesn't already exist. And if it does exist and needs to be updated, uh, we would uh, actually urge the applicant to come back to Community Board 5 to uh, bring us up to date on uh, what that would be, whether it becomes a full-fledged application that goes to the commission or uh, dealt at staff level. Um, I think it's important that we kept we be uh, kept appraised of uh, what this uh, signage master plan uh, would be. So th those are my uh, general uh, comments for this application. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone who wanted to speak uh, was given the opportunity. Any uh, other comments from members of uh, the committee? Okay, so seeing none. Uh, oh yeah, Sarah. Sarah, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Um, yes, um, I was just thinking, if we had a restaurant in the basement where the restaurant used to be, maybe there could be a winning idea at some point, maybe not now, maybe in the future of having a turn of the century or 1920s cuisine. Maybe that kind of thing will become popular after we get fed up with kale and uh, juice and whatnot else. I don't know, it's just a thought. Sarah, as, as we discussed last month, we don't comment on news. Um, oh, okay. so that becomes a restaurant and what is on the menu is really outside of the purview of, okay. uh, of the committee. All right, thank, thank you. Um, any more comments? Okay, so seeing none, uh, we need a motion. Uh, Tony, you were assigned uh, the review of this application, so I will turn to you uh, for a motion. Sure. 
Sure. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the application with the additional language we spoke about regarding any potential installation of a mechanical door opener um, and that the applicant has, has committed to not having that installed on the masonry. Um, we're going to also have the applicant uh, confirm whether or not there's a signage uh, component of their master plan or if there's one in place. If there is not, we encourage them to come back to us. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, do we, I think we should add some language about the, um, uh, uh, that, that the applicant uh, represented that there would be no additional lighting at the 21st floor. I, I think that it, it, it would, if we were to you know, contemplate a, a presentation uh, that would include lighting, I think we would be concerned and we may have comments about what that lighting should be. Uh, so maybe we want to clarify that currently the applicant is representing that there will be no lighting on the um, out, outdoor facade of the, uh, the 21st uh, story uh, uh, penthouse. Got it. Okay. Uh, is everybody okay with it? All right. So I'll second the motion. And we are ready to take this to a vote. Um, uh, Buzz? <clears throat> Uh, Renee Tefaro. Yes. Uh, James. Yes. Uh, Sarah. Yes. Uh, Laura. Yes. Uh, John. Yes. Uh, Nick. I don't think Nick is on the uh, the meeting. Um, uh, Suzanne. I don't think Suzanne is on the meeting either. Uh, Richard. Yes. Uh, Mike Kayback. Yes. Uh, Renee Kinsella. Yes. Uh, Sam. Yes. Chuck. Yes. Janet. Yes. Karen. Yes. Barbara. Yes. And Tony. Yes. And Leila, I'm a yes. So uh, motion carries, unanimous vote. Thank you very much to uh, the team of architects and applicants for a great presentation. And uh, I would just add that uh, your presence is uh, of course welcome at the full board uh, meeting of Community Board 5 on uh, Thursday, October the 8th, uh, but it is not mandatory and would not be held against you. Uh, you have an opportunity to speak during the, the public session of uh, this meeting and uh, your comments are limited to two minutes. Um, and with all of that being said, I wish you all a good night and uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you Thank so you much, guys. Much. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a